Hi, I'm Bob Canote. This is the Camp Chaos Chronicles, and welcome to Hell Week. Dang it. So what do I mean by that? Well, I've got two engines here that I'm starting the overhauls on, and I've got about a week's window of opportunity to get these all broken down to castings, get those pressure washed, and out to the shop that does my ultrasonic cleaning, get the crankshafts in to be reground if they need it, which they do, and get all that done, and then have enough time left for me to maybe Take a weekend off, maybe a week. Sounds crazy, but maybe so. So let's get started and let's get this stuff done. So as we begin to take the bottom end apart, I think it's important to accentuate how important it is to keep everything organized so that you don't spend half your time trying to locate fasteners in small pieces as you uh, as you put this thing back together and what i do is i break things down into assemblies for example uh, the first thing i do here is i knock off the uh, harmonic dampener up front here and that's a fairly easy thing to do also all the bolts on the front cover inc including the water pump bolts all go in one bin brackets that get bolted to the block like the, the mounts on both sides and the alternator bracket and so forth. All those fasteners get put in a bin and uh, the oil pan stuff. Even the internal ones, you got these that go around the perimeter, but also on the inside, you got the windage tray. Keep all those in the same bin, or I do at any rate. It just makes things a whole lot simpler. And anything on the inside, of course, you've got all the pipes and the fittings that go with them. Um, should go in a in a uh, in their own tub and also the connecting rod nuts and so forth so organization is really really important i went on a cold cut buying spree a couple of years ago i was big into roast beef and uh you know i'd come up with a couple of these every week and they're perfect i use them again and again and again and you can use a black sharpie on these things and when you're done just take a little carb cleaner on a cloth wipe it off and uh, you know you could use ziploc lunch bags that sort of thing but organization is going to be important so right now what we're going to do is we're going to take some time and pull the oil pan and the sandwich plate off so we can get to the inside and that also then will free up the front cover So at the point where we're going to remove the pan here, it's really important to not take a screwdriver and drive it in between parts and pry them up. And, uh, you don't want to damage gasket surfaces and you don't want to bend the flange of the oil pan up because that of course can generate leaks. Another thing that we want to do before we remove any of this stuff is to take this fitting off. What this does, it fits in the inlet side of the pump takes bypass oil that goes through the oil cooler and then runs it back to the inlet side of the pump. Uh, that can make it a little bit more difficult to remove the sandwich plate here. There's two parts to the pan. First of all, there's the sump itself and then the sandwich plate right here. So we're gonna pull this loose. Then we can dislodge the sump with a dead blow hammer. And 
If we take a close look, we've got a bead of clear silicone that's squeezed out here, not only here at the sandwich plate, but up here. So what's happened is that this thing has been glued on. So we are gonna have to do a little bit of prying. What we wanna do is find a place where, like right up front here, we're not gonna jam it in. There's an edge sticking out beyond the casting of the sandwich plate. We're gonna pry up on that. We can still bend it, but we want to be careful with the way that we do it. Wow, this is horrible. I've never seen one stuck on like this before. The good news is the oil pan didn't leak. So I had to do what I told you you don't want to do. I didn't actually jam anything in between there, any appreciable distance, but um, yeah, this gasket is really stuck on here. And so now we've got these bolts underneath here that hold the windage tray on. And we got a rounded bolt. Oh, there we go. Another one. Or it could be that I've just got a rounded socket. Yeah, that's the case. That socket's only 40 years old. Maybe time for a new one. So the question that arises is, what was uh, the removal of the oil pan necessary to do? Could be that the timing chain tensioner needed to be replaced and if you're gonna leave the heads on, the only way to get the front cover off to do that is by removing the oil pan. So it could be we've got a reasonably new timing chain tensioner under here. Or it could be low oil pressure and they put new bearings in. Uh, don't know. Wondering what are the chances we can get this off without spilling this all over the place. Not good, but let's give it a shot. Now we can get this pry bar between the top of the sandwich plate and the block. There we go. Our next step will be to remove the pipes for the uh, oil pickup and the sump, the two fittings for the oil pump, and then the supply tube that goes to the oil filter casting on the outside of the engine.
Now, if you look at the nuts on the main bearing caps, you can see that you got short ones, you got long ones. If you lose track of which one goes where, all you gotta do is take a look at the windage tray and any place that a bolt attaches the windage tray to the engine, that's where a long nut goes. Now's a good time to pull off the front cover, which is a fairly simple process. You have to pull the harmonic dampener off the crankshaft in order to pull it off. And of course, all the bolts all the way around uh, have to be removed. But also, there's a woodruff key right here, which I don't suppose really needs to be removed in order to pull it off. But as long as you got the harmonic dampener off, it's a good time to extract that. Gonna have to do it eventually. Got all the bolts off. There you go. And isn't this interesting? There's our chain tensioner. We've got one piece of the tensioner laying in the, in the front of the block. We've got this piece down here, but the entire rest of the tensioner, that's sort of a plastic leaf spring, is missing and it's not in the it's not in the pan i can't imagine that someone would have pulled this thing apart to replace the tensioner and not actually have done it and it is, it is just puzzling as to how this would be because there's no other pieces other than small pieces in the engine this may be why this engine is here this is a spare engine that the client had picked up so he can run his car this summer and then this winter stick the engine in. And now would be a good time to pull off the oil pump. Which is a simple operation. We can pull the timing chain off. There we go. Now we'll remove the timing chain guides. And what I'd recommend that you do at this point is to take some pictures on your cell phone at a couple of different angles, because when you try to put this back together again for the first time, it can be a little confusing, even with the drawings in the manual. Now the chain guides appear to be in really good shape. There's very little grooving in the friction surface. This one's a little bit worse, but, uh, and this one here, this one also. I mean, it looks like these things have been replaced at some point. Either that or this is a really low mile engine, which just judging on the general appearance of it, I doubt it. Timing chain. These are really, really high quality and I've got the same one in my track car that had 75,000 miles on it when I took the engine apart to rebuild for the track. See what I mean about taking a few pictures? Well, that's as far as we're going to go on this episode. We've gotten the engine torn down to the point where on the next episode, we're going to extract the rotating assembly, crankshaft, connecting rods, pistons, and the cylinder liners as well. That's when we'll really get a look at what kind of condition this engine is in. And so far, it looks pretty average. Needs some work. Now, if you like these videos, 
like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, and maybe leave some comments down below so that we can know what we can do to do what we do better. So we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.